Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to another edition of Knowledge Pool. Last week on our tournament preview, we said that Mono Black Devotion would perform really well this past weekend. Let's just say we weren't wrong. Today's deck tech is on the new Devotion Monster of the format. As always, we start with our land base. Being monocolored, color fixing is something this deck never has to deal with. It runs 19 swamps as its main source of mana. In addition, there are two Temple of Deceit. I know what you're thinking, but this is mono black. That's how good Scrylands are. These temples are awesome. The remaining cards used to fill the 25 land base are three Muta Vault and one Nyklo Shrine to Nyx. The vaults are great for applying pressure and stemming off early attacks if necessary. Nykthos' inclusion is pretty self-explanatory. Devotion works really well with Devotion. As opposed to the first version of this strategy, this deck runs only 15 creatures. Usual playsets of Desecration Demon and Grey Merchant of Asphodel are auto-includes. The demon locks down boards very quickly, and if he isn't dealt with immediately, completely takes over against any deck. It also doesn't hurt that he gives two devotion to black. The merchant is the cornerstone of the strategy. Devotion in black is very powerful and very easy to get. This merchant has an immediate impact on the game state when his enter the battlefield effect triggers. Most of the time, this will swing life totals heavily in your favor, or just straight up win the game. Oddly, the other place that found among creatures was Night Vale Spectre. This card has been known to be in mono blue devotion, but not mono black. From this point on, however, he will be an auto include, just as the demon and merchant are. At 2 3, he's a pretty efficient blocker. Flying gives decent evasion when trying to activate his ability, and his devotion to black is huge. There aren't really any other creatures that can fit the role this guy fills. The only other creatures in the main deck are two Packrat and one Erebos, God of the Dead. The number of Packrat included came down from four since Protor Theros. This card gets out of control faster than most any other. Against a black-white midrange strategy or anything that relies on spot removal, this card makes their removal dead. There's no way that Hero's Downfall can keep up with creating more and more rats every turn. You just overwhelm them and win. The one of Erebos respects the aggro matchup, especially those with Boros Reckoner. Erebos is a great way to fight the Reckoner, since other than kill spells, this deck doesn't deal with it well. There's only one in the deck because honestly, what would you remove to put more in? The rest of the deck is filled with 20 spells, mostly removal. However, we will start with 4 Underworld Connections. In addition to providing amazing devotion to black, this is just pure card advantage. Granted, these will probably come out against aggressive strategies, mainboarding four of these game one isn't a terrible idea. Against anything that isn't aggro, this card holds up really well and always helps you win the card advantage battle. Even against aggro, this deck has no shortage of life gain to help balance out its losses from tapping for more cards. Speaking of life gain, the only other non-removal effect in the deck is Whip of Erebos. Two of these help to ensure that no matter what you do to the Grey Merchant, his usability is never truly gone. Being able to bring back the Merchant to trigger his effect all over again is probably going to be the end of the game. It's that devastating. The entire rest of the deck is filled with hand disruption and kill spells. Four thoughts he start off this nightmare. Forcing your opponent to discard pretty much anything neuters their ability to execute their strategies effectively. This is why Thoughtseize is so expensive. It ruins games for people, for one black mana, and two life. Gah. The removal package is made up of two Devour Flesh, two Doomblade, four Heroes Downfall, and two Ultimate Price. Doomblade and Heroes Downfall are standard issue at this point. Downfall is versatile enough to kill both Domri Raid and Pelucranos. Doomblade is just a cheap removal spell against any deck not running black. That's easy enough. The Devour Flesh and Ultimate Price are where your attention should be. Devour Flesh is a great way to get around both Hexproof and Indestructible. In a world where Sylvan Karyatid and Fleece Main Lion are both actually decent cards, this effect could be invaluable, especially at 2 mana. In addition, don't forget that it gains you life. This is perfect against an aggressive strategy that is beating down with Scavenging Ooze and Luxon Smiter. Chances are that life gain will save you a turn or two. 
Ultimate price is the big surprise here. This is clearly in response to the increase in devotion decks being played after Pro Tour Theros. Ultimate price is supremely effective against mono blue and mono black devotion, literally killing everything in those decks minus Night Vale Spectre and maybe a Judge's Familiar. It also helps against the other devotion decks. Mono red devotion is still a thing, and most red green aggro decks are almost exclusively green right now. And even if they're red, all their big creatures are one color. Ultimate price is where you want to be with your removal. The sideboard is a lot of what we would expect from this type of strategy. We start with one pithy needle. Most of the time, the needle is in the board because of planeswalkers. This could also be for Pelucranos and his monstrosity, but is more likely targeting Domri Raid, Xenagos, or Jace. Next, we have three Lifebane Zombies. This was in the main deck, but was taken out to make room for Spectre. This card is fine as long as you can get value off of his ability. Otherwise, his utility is pretty low, even though he does grant you two devotion. You want this guy to hit something like a Johnny, Blood Baron, Obsidat, or pretty much anything else that goes bump in the night, or for that matter, in the day. Two Pack Rat are on the board for the Black White Midrange matchup or other similar strategies. Any deck that doesn't have board sweep has real problems dealing with Pack Rat. Spot removal and combat cannot keep up with them no matter how hard you try, so expect this to come in against you if you are a mid-range strategy without Mizia Mortars or Supreme Verdict. One Dark Betrayal is pretty obvious. A ton of decks are running black right now, and technically this is the best creature removal there is against a black deck. Definitely comes in against the Mirror and most black-white decks. Next, we have two more Devour Flesh. These come in against Hexproof decks, Heroic decks most likely, and strategies that are just fast in general. Mono Black Devotion isn't the most speedy deck, so this helps it last a bit longer. Doomblade fills somewhat similar of a role. While it doesn't gain you life, spot removal is all that this strategy has against aggressive board flood decks. You can never have enough removal. A second Erebos on the side can come in against a couple of things. It most likely comes in against Boros Reckoner because that guy is dumb. It also probably comes in against any control deck running blue-white. One of the best parts about Sphinx's Revelation is that it gains you a ton of life. Must be inconvenient not being able to do that. <sniffs> Awkward. The last card in the sideboard is Duress. Three of these will come in against control decks every time. Most control decks are running almost no creatures at this point, which makes them extremely vulnerable to how amazing Duress is. This card is a monster against them, and they will hate you every second for playing it. This deck has both good and bad matchups, and it's important to know which is which. First off, this matches up pretty decently game one against most aggressive strategies. You have a ton of spot removal which helps you slow them down, and once you get a creature or two on the board and drop a merchant, you should be able to stabilize. Cards like Whip of Erebos and Devour Flesh help you stay in the game longer until you get the pieces you need to take it over. Midrange is where your matchups start getting a bit iffy. Black-white midrange game 1 is pretty difficult to deal with since half your removal package is dead against Blood Baron and Obsidat. However, after game 1 your matchup gets a ton better. Dark Betrayal, more Pack Rat, less Doom Blade, and less Ultimate Price make your deck a monster to deal with for them. Pack Rat is key against midrange decks without mass removal. Seriously, keep that in mind. It's a stupid good card. Control decks are a serious problem game one. Since most of them don't run creatures anymore, or only a couple of walkers, your Devour Flesh, Doom Blade, Ultimate Price, and Hero's Downfall are all cards that will spend a ton of dead time in your hand. Having nothing better to do with half of your spells than pitching them to Pack Rat is not a good place to be. Effectively, you only have about 70% of your deck to work with game one, and that sucks. After boarding, it gets a little better. Pithing Needle and Duress help disrupt their walker game plan, and you can always threaten pack rats and Erebos on them. Mono Black Devotion plays a little more like a control deck than Mono Blue Devotion does. There are a ton of reactive spells in this deck, and it is very much mid-range because of that. Your early game can be a bit slow, so try to keep your life total high with Devour Flesh, Blocking Smart with Night Vale Spectre, and Whip of Erebos for good measure. Your goal isn't to bash your opponent in with a couple pack rats. Granted, if you can do that, go for it. But if there's any resistance, you're better off holding back and building devotion up for a colossal Grey Merchant of Asphodel. This strategy should actually be called Mono Grey Merchant of Devotion. Yeah.
I like that. This deck looks really interesting to play, and I'm not surprised I'm seeing it everywhere. It has a ton of reach and can fight back from games it has no business fighting back from. You should expect to see this strategy for a while. As always, subscribe below for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.